Hello YouTube, welcome to part 4 of the character study on the fake mook. No introduction today, nothing of note happened last time, the video got rated again by Jason Sock accounts. He actually was quite mad, it was interesting to see. Um, he usually tends to try and, you know, be smug when he comments on other people's channels with, uh, with his fake accounts. This time though, he quickly devolved into pure anger. And he started throwing racial slurs at me, um, uh, criticizing what he believes is my religion, uh, which confirms to me that he's a complete racist because for some reason that he thinks I'm a Muslim. So he basically used the entire nine yards of racial slurs, all of which were cut by YouTube and immediately deleted. I didn't even have to do anything. Uh, it's sad because I usually like to play with him in the comments. Didn't get the chance, but he was quite triggered by that. And uh, because he apparently thought that I'm the one who deletes his comment, uh, which is funny coming from someone who deletes 90% of the comments he gets. Uh, we're going to get back to the, the racist thing because there's a plethora of evidence that that guy is a complete racist. Uh, but for now, we're just going to dive into what I have collected. Some of which, uh, some of the informations I'm going to divulge to you today are, I've never been divulged on YouTube. Uh, they exist on the, on the net because that's where I got my sources from. And I can always match things that I say with videos that can be found in, on certain websites. But I'm sure that for people who've sat through the first three parts and are now watching this one, you are going to hear a lot of things that you've never heard before. This is men's galore, guys, okay? This is glorious. Some of the stuff I found, even I couldn't believe it. And I've been watching Jason for five years. I know the guy is a complete idiot, but some of the things I found blew my mind even then. So we're going to get into that. Uh, as far as the frequency of the videos, I'm still going to make one a month. Uh, it doesn't change anything. And uh, just for you, Jason, because I know you watch these, you keep saying you're going to strike my videos. Please try it. Try to strike my videos. We both know you can't. It's the reason why you're so upset by them is because you cannot touch them. I'm following all of YouTube's, YouTube's guidelines. I'm not stating your full name. I'm not using any of your content. You cannot touch it. It's a character study. It's, it's fictional, right? It's all right. It's all trolling. That's what you do. You troll in which case videos that I make about your trolling also constitute trolling. So I'm fine and you know it, but continue threatening me to strike me. You could, couldn't manage to do that in three months and you never will. Okay. So let's talk about the general disposition of Bloho when it comes to physique. Uh, I've spoken about the fact that he looks like garbage. He has a terrible physique for someone who's been taking drugs for 10 years and who trains. But there's more than that because he gives health advice to people. He tries to help people be healthier in their everyday life. And that's just insanely idiotic because the guy is probably the worst example of health I've ever seen in my life. He has no teeth, which you know that it happens, right? But this has gotten to the point where he, he now doesn't film himself anymore. He used to film himself talking to the camera all the time. If you wonder why he doesn't anymore, it's because his teeth are almost all gone. And the funny, funniest part about that is he blames the, uh, the, the social security of the UK for that, meaning that apparently it's the fault of the UK dentist that he doesn't know how to brush his teeth. Jason, you drink sugary drinks all the time. Your diet is disgusting. You most likely stuff your face with sugar all the time. There's a reason why your teeth are falling out. It's not the fault of the dentist. Most likely they try to tell you that your diet was killing yourself, but it's his fault. The posture is awful. For the people who've seen the video I made about how to have a proper posture, take everything that guy does and reverse it and you'll have a good posture. He looks like a turtle that is trying to get out of the shell. It's He has a forward head posture, probably one of the worst ones I've seen in my life. He has a hunchback, all of which are things that hurt him when it comes to lifting because they damage his ability to actually lift, which is also why if you're wondering why he doesn't do certain lifts like front squats or why does he why doesn't he actually actually do back squats a normal back squat it's for that he lacks the mobility because his body is completely messed up and that's due to years and years and years of sitting in front of a computer completely rounded over 
he has no mobility. Uh, the, the latest thing coming from the Blohoverse is that he now criticizes chin-ups and pull-ups for being bad for the shoulders, even though they're the exact opposite, they're amazing for the shoulders. But if you have garbage mobility in that joint, then they become dangerous. And that's what he has. He cannot do them properly without hurting himself because of his bad posture, as I said, and the fact that he lacks, he lacks mobility. He cannot go down in a squat. I can tell you right now that if he tried to do a post squat as to grass all the way down, he wouldn't do, be able to do it. He could barely do it with 400 pounds. This is the reason why he always uses artifices to be able to squat more than he actually is capable of in a regular powerlifting competition that would ask him to go to depth. It cannot do that. And this, also the, the, this is also the reason why you don't see him doing any calisthenics. He's one, because he's obese, and two, because calisthenics require you to have some ability to move your body through space. You need to be coordinated, which is exactly what he isn't. There's a video floating on his channel where he demonstrates the push-up, the bended push-up, and he does one push-up. For someone who's been training for 10 years, he should have the ability to crank out 20 push-ups like it's nothing. At any point during your life, once you're past a certain point of muscular development, as an adult male, 20 push-ups should be your baseline. You shouldn't be able to regress past 20 push-ups. For me, I can do bench press for two hours. I can still do 20 push-ups. He can. Why? Because he, his ratio of mass and strength is completely distorted. He doesn't have the ability to move his body through space anymore. He lost that. And if you take his advice, you're going to lose that too, because you're going to turn into one of those completely immobile powerlifter. And the thing with these guys is that at least they're strong. At least they traded their dynamic strength for static strength. That's a fine trade-off by my standards, if that's all you want to do with your ability to move your body. He doesn't even have that. So he has nothing left anymore. Uh, and as far as the body goes and the integrity of the tendons and the joints, he's completely messed up. If you look at his biceps, there are chunks of the bicep missing because of the, the amount of time he injected uh, Sintho into that. And uh, I wish I could have been there when he went to the doctor and tried to pass his lumpy, disgusting, oil-filled bicep as an, in, like an infection. Because that's what he claims. He claims he shaved his bicep, which... First off, who does that? Who has enough hair on their bicep to shave it? I'm pretty much a monkey at this point, and even I am not at that point yet. And so he claimed that he shaved himself and that he cut himself and that got infected. A surgeon would not have to remove portion of the tendon and the muscle because you cut yourself. You would need to be skeptic to have to go through something so heavy in terms of surgical intervention. What happened was, he kept putting oil in his biceps because he wanted bigger arms because he had noodle arms. And I think his body dysmorphia just completely shut down the part of his brain that handles reasoning. And therefore, at some point, most likely the doctor was like, hey, you are going to lose your arms. Like they're going to turn brown and you're going to lose them. And he had to get the oil removed and portions of the muscle and the tendon that were already starting to rot. So that's for the arms, for the rest of the body. People like to say that he has bad genetics, and he does. I'm not going to argue against that. He has terrible genetics for uh, aesthetics, but he made it worse, meaning that he was born with a very large waist. He has a, the narrowest frame I've ever seen. He's small in height. He's not good looking. I mean, he, he got a pretty bad hand in terms of genetics at birth, but he made it worse by focusing on certain movements like the deadlift and the squat, which made his lower body that was already big, even bigger, by complete, completely neglecting upper body movements. Curls, for example. The, this is the reason why he looks like a lunch lady, is because he does way too much lower body stuff and not enough upper body stuff. And at this point, it's too late. He's cursed. Add to that the fact that he completely burnt out his hormonal profile with his PED use, and you get Jason Bloho, the man who will never progress, never lose any weight, he will never look good, he will never be able to gain any amount of respect in the realm of powerlifting because he's weak in relation to his actual body weight. So he's stuck. And the last thing he has is cope. Oh, let's talk about that. Okay, so this one is, uh, is actually a, a quite, quite a sad topic. I didn't think I would talk about it so fast, but 
for the people who actually have been following him for a while, he used to have a dog. And the dog appeared on camera sometime. The dog was there. Uh, where is the dog now? I haven't seen the dog in a while. The reason why is because the, the dog is gone. Uh, I don't know if the dog was his. Most of the source I found said that it, it was his girlfriend's. But that when they split, he kept the dog. And yet the dog is not here anymore. Well, we don't really have to look for an answer because Jason provided us with an answer. Jason said that uh, uh, what he calls stalkers came into his house and poisoned his dog. That's what he said. That's his version of the facts. And he, if you look at the story that he said, he even claimed that the stalkers left and then he came into the apartment and he saw his dog so he took the dog in his arms and the dog died in his arms which is a very sad story and most likely a story you've already heard and uh, the reason why you've already heard that story is because it's the plot of i am a legend it's you know the the movie with will smith and the dog and the zombies yeah that's what happens in the movie so it's yet another time where jason took a hollywood reference and tried to apply it to his life he cannot even lie this is where that guy is. He doesn't even have the ability to come up with creative lies. He has to copy something he's seen in movies. This is the reason why the entire thing about the fake Merc stuff was copied from Predator. All of the stories he said about oh, being in the jungle, that's from Predator, the movie, the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And if you don't believe me, watch some of his compilations, the, the Bloho compilations of, on YouTube about the fake Merc stuff, then watch Predator. You will see the similarities, it's insane. But yeah, so that's what he said. The issue is that is most likely completely wrong because Jason is a compulsive liar. So we know that that's not what happened to the dog. So what are the other options? Well, first option, he realized that he cannot even take care of himself. So a dog is out of the picture. So he gave the dog to someone, a family that would take good care of the dog. That would be great. Secondly, the girlfriend or someone who has a little bit of sense took the dog away from him because they realized that the dog would be dead within two days. That would, well, that would also be great. Even though I wouldn't want the dog to stay with the girlfriend because we're going to get to her, she is not, she's not as bad because it's tough to be as bad as Broho, but she's also the worst. And then there's a third option, the sad one, which is very likely, very likely happened, is that either the dog was crushed by weights because there are videos of Bloho lifting and the dog gets hit by weight because he's in the room and the dog is excited, he moves around, so you have to be able to control the weight so that you don't crush your dog. Or Bloho is just a complete you know, mess and he forgot to give water or food to the dog and the dog died and he just put the, the corpse somewhere in a garbage can somewhere and that's what happened. For reference, the name of the dog is Nova. And uh, Nova will eventually get justice, I can tell you that. So I hope the dog is okay. I hope Nova is okay somewhere with a family that uh, takes care of him. Uh, and if he's dead, well, the, his spirit will not rest until Bloho is punished for what he did. As far as uh, the entire realm of YouTube fitness and controversy that was started by Jason, there's another Jason that is quite well known in the realm of lol cows, and it's Jason Genova. Only difference between Genova and Bloho is that Genova was born like this, meaning that he has a lot of disabilities, he is on meds, he took certain meds that completely fried his brain. So it's not really his fault, meaning that he was pretty much born like this and it got worse with time, but the reason why people like Genova more than they like Bloho is because at least Genova has a job. He has girlfriends. Admittedly, some of them are not girls, but at least he has partners. Let's call that that. He has friends. He has the Delray Misfits. He seems to be well liked by those friends. He, ha he makes jokes with them. He has fun with them. What does Bloho have? If you compare the life of Genova and Bloho, Genova mugs Bloho completely. And worse than that, Genova mugs Bloho in terms of physique as well, because he has a much better physique. I mean, maybe not now, but back when he was training with uh, Kof Adam, oh yeah, he had a better physique, he had a pretty good physique. And even in terms of strength, and you might think I'm crazy, but they have this, a similar bench. 
at the same body weight, I think uh, Genova got to like free plate bench, which is what Jason benches, what Bloho benches. So I cannot, it, it's insane, but comparing someone with a mental disability that's quite severe and an adult male that claims to have 150 IQ and be a genius, I cannot find a single point where the so-called so genius is doing better than the guy who was born mentally retarded. That is a sad state of affair. And yet, Bloho constantly made fun of Genova. I think he was upset because they shared the, the same first name. And uh, Genova is the best. He, he always called out Bloho for being a fat tub of lard. He made all the 66 against Jason all the time. And actually, if you follow the lore, the only person in YouTube fitness who got a permanent lifetime order 66 against him is Jason Bloho. Is the only person because usually an order 66 can be resolved, you know, if you collab with the Peace Lord, if you give him some bucks to pay gas or to pay for his Burger King or whatever, he will lift the order 66 at some point. If you give him a sponsorship or if you film with him like Rich Piana did, but he never lifted the permanent order 66 on Bloho, which is still to this day in order. So if you are a follower of the Dark Lord Spaniard, you better be still at the, the grindstone. You better be still doing it. Those are all those coming directly from your Lord. So that's that with the Genova thing. Um, I, in terms of someone else who might be a little bit uh, cuckoo in the head, we're going to talk about stu the Stubes a little bit. He's m much less known than uh, Jason Genova. But for the people who are, you know, interested in the men's, they know who the Stubes is. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a channel anymore, so he doesn't have a pre presence on YouTube anymore. But he was basically a guy who was lifting with terrible form, and uh, people really liked him for that because he was completely oblivious to it. So people had fun with it. He, he was a, a pretty good lol cow himself. Funny thing about him is, it's the same logic as with Blow and Genova. If I compare the two, Mark Stubing is doing much better in life than Bloho, at least in terms of aesthetic and strength, because Mark was actually quite gifted in terms of looks and in terms of ability to move weight. If he had been caught, uh, coughed by someone who actually knew what he was doing and he actually listened to him, he, he could have gotten quite far. He had the body for it. Even Genova, actually, the two of them, which is a testimony to how in reality anyone can achieve anything in terms of physique and because you just have to be dedicated and listen to people who know what they're talking about. But Mark had a pretty good frame on him. He was tall. He was 6'4", large shoulders. And the funny thing is that he was in love with Bloho. And for the people who didn't follow that little uh, side plot, you might be surprised by what I'm saying, but that was a guy who was a diehard fan of Bloho and who would comment on his channel all the time back in the days and who was desperately trying to get in contact with Jason because they lived in the same area. So he tried to meet him again, again, and again. And people were dying for it to happen. Like this is a collab that would have really helped uh, Jason's channel, but he refused. And he refused for a very simple reason. He was afraid of how bad he was going to get mugged by Mark if they filmed together. Because you put a guy who's 5'7", slumped shoulders, forward head posture, pale, small, narrow frame, wide waist. You put him next to a six feet four Superman with blue eyes, uh, large shoulders, big. He would have just been mugged into oblivion and his ego couldn't handle that. And that's a testimony also to all of the people who actually believe him to be a coach. You give a coach, someone like Mark Stubing, he would be over the moon, because this is a prospect that has a lot of talent that you can turn into someone who's extremely successful in the realm of powerlifting. And I can tell you that this is the reason why Bloho is not a coach, he will never be a coach, is because when he sees someone with more talent than him, instead of being excited about it, he gets resentful because he hates the fact that his genetics, genetics are garbage. And that's a big issue, you cannot be a coach if you're going to refuse to coach people who are better than you in terms of potential. And since his potential is 
just below zero, it means that the only people he's going to coach are people who are even worse than him, which is just not going to result in anything productive if you think about it. I've seen people, young men, come on uh, Jason's channel sharing their strength and accomplishment. Sometimes guys who were like 16 and benching 315 and being, you know, sh showing a lot of potential for the sport. And the first thing Jason does is immediately trying to bash them and make them, you know, make them feel bad about themselves. Why? Because he hates the fact that some people put in zero work and are better than him after he spent 20 years training and destroying his body with drugs. Which, you know, he's a sad little human being and that's who he is. And we're just going to, to, uh, <laughs> to uh, finish with those tubes because a lot of people might know who he was and the, the fact that he was sort of obsessed with Bloho. It went quite far, meaning that Mark is not the most stable individual. And when someone who is 5'5 five five is not stable, it's already scary enough. But when a six feet four, 260 pound man goes completely nuts in the head and wants you, like he has your name on his list, yeah, that's not something you want. And the thing is that Mark's, uh, Mark was becoming more and more agitated. He tried to reach uh, Jason more and more. He posted comments on his channel all the time. He tried to get his phone number and he couldn't really show up to where Jason was because Jason never goes out. He's on, always in his apartment. But eventually, Jason banned him from his comments, which didn't stop uh, Mark from making videos calling out Jason and saying, I want to see you, I want to see you. And I think Jason got scared. I think he, he was legit scared. Because what if he goes out one day to go to Costco to buy some jasmine rice and he sees the tubes at the bus stop? He's not going to outrun him. He couldn't even outrun a toddler. So he would be completely, you know, out of luck. And so the best course of action for Jaden and what he's decided to do and what he's, not only he did it, but he made a video about it, being proud about it. He called Mark's mom. He took a phone, he dialed the number of the mother of someone who is in his thirties and he spoke with her and told her, your son has been, he's been bullying me. He's posting comments on my channel. I'm, I'm scared. I think he's in love with me. Please do something about it. He's your son. He will listen. Please do something about it. And it, she did. She called her son and she told him to stop bullying the poor 40 year old man who apparently is a badass and who has guns and you don't tell me what to do. And if you approach me, I will shoot you dead. The same guy called someone's mommy so that he could be freed of the bullying from the son. So that's, that's already sad. But now I have a little scoop for Jason because Bloho, I think you didn't realize who you were talking to on that phone. See, I did a little bit of digging. And uh, by matching dates, I realized one thing. By the time you called his mom, she was already deceased. She wasn't with us anymore. And yet you spoke to a woman who apparently responded when you told her that you were trying to talk to Mark's mom. So who do you think you were talking to? Little, little tip. Mark has a thing for uh, putting on dresses and makeup and high heels and becoming a six, six feet seven Amazon and going out and terrorizing the folks. And he's quite good at it. Actually, uh, if you look at look up at pictures, he's, he's pretty gifted at it. So, uh, yeah, the, the end word of that entire story is that uh, you actually spoke to Mark. The person on the end, other hand of that phone was Mark pretending to be his dead mom. I, I know it's getting dark. It's going to get much darker because, as I said, I'm revealing stuff here that most people don't even know about, most of which I've verified. This one, what I just told you, is pretty solid, meaning that I found a lot of sources cor that corroborate what I just said. So let's move on from that. <laughs> but uh, even just that is insane. Can you imagine the life you have to live to have those situations? That's, that's the life of a Lorca. That's Jason's life. For now and forever. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to speak a little bit about uh, the fact that he tends to really like to build people based on their ability to uh, 
use semantics. I don't know why he has such a, a focus on that, but it's his go-to thing, which coming from someone who cannot write his own language is in interesting because if you look at the sock accounts that are going to post comments underneath this video, you're going to notice that they make a lot of grammatical mistakes, a lot of them. And it's not necessarily something that means you're an idiot, but for people who claim to be incredibly intelligent, not being able to write in the one language you speak and write is quite telling when it comes to actually being able to apply the IQ that you claim. I say that why? Because he speaks English, which is already not the toughest language to speak. If you're, if you're watching this and the only language you speak is English, I'm not saying you're an idiot, but every linguist agrees on the fact that one of the easiest language to master on this earth is English. And he cannot even be remotely good at expressing himself in the one language he speaks and writes 40 year olds in. He spent 40 years training that skill and he's still at that level, which tells you a lot about his ability to do anything else. If you pay that guy for a program, what is the next step? You're going to pay him so that he can teach you Spanish? Oh, I forgot one thing. I wrote it underneath, but uh, I missed it. He, it's when he called Stoob's mom, it wasn't the first time he called someone's mom. He also tried to contact Vega, Vegan Games' mom. And uh, it wasn't that nice back in the days because it was, it was the peak of Jason's career on YouTube and people actually paid attention to him. So his little head was completely inflated with ego. And uh, Vegan Gates made videos about him calling him a, a fat ass and everything, which is quite accurate. Even though I'm not 100% on board with what, all of what Richard does, at least that he did properly. So what did uh, Jason do? Instead of either going to an expo and you know, confronting, confronting Richard physically, <coughs> which would have been quite easy to do because Richard is, or at least was back in the days, always showing up at expos. And he would actually go up to the people he made videos about. So he actually has that going for him. He's, he's brave, he's courageous to, to a degree. Um, no, what Jason did instead is uh, he sent threats to his mom because at the time Richard was living with his mom. So what Bloho did is he sent not even anything official, he just sent messages saying, hey, if your son doesn't take off his videos off of YouTube criticizing me, I'm going to sue you. And his logic was because he utilizes a computer underneath your roof and therefore if I sue him, I'm suing you. So whether or not that's accurate, I don't think it is. That's not how law works. He was threatening someone's mom to get that person to stop being mean to them. When I tell you that the guy is infantile to the utmost level, I'm, I'm not being hyperbolic. The guy is stuck in high school. He graduated high school, but he's still stuck in it. <clears throat> and uh, I'm just going to finish with the one language thing. The only thing that guy does in his life is he makes YouTube content and he lives slash programs. All of which he's terrible at. He's been, he's had terrible strength numbers for as long as he's been on YouTube. The guy is still benching three plates after 20 years of training and heavy drug use. How is that possible? I don't know, but that's, that's what he does. His programming skills are subpar. You know, I, it's even tough to say if they are subpar or inexistent because when I watch videos about him talking about programming, he just regurgitates things he's learned on, on Google. So it's tough to really be able to tell if he actually knows something or if he just knows how to read, which is already a good thing. He knows how to read. But as far as the YouTube things go, goes, I think the YouTube thing is the one that uh, is the most bothersome because I've explained that in the past uh, video. He has around 3000 active subs and he has a reserve of 20, 20K subs that only watch him for the drama. Those numbers are insanely low. Meaning that for someone who started when it was easy to get subscribers on YouTube Fitness, the fact that seven years in, he's at that level really tells a lot about it. And if you look at numbers, look at my channel. I started this channel in the middle of, of COVID-19 lockdown. So a moment where YouTube is at its lowest, where people don't care about fitness because they can't access a gym. 
at a moment where the YouTube algorithm does not help small channels at all, and through my own means, I managed to gain a lot of subs. Uh, which, it's you guys, so thank you for subbing. I know you're here only because you want to hear me talk about Bloho, and that's fine. Look at his channel. He has more than 100,000 subs. At this level, anyone who knows anything about YouTube and the way sub accumulation works, at this level, YouTube just gives you subs. It feeds you subs because it, it's basically seen that your channel has the ability to attract a large amount of viewers and it wants you to have more. And if you want a practical application of that, look at Eric Bugelagen's channel. If you look at his social blade, which gives you all of the data and the statistics, you will see that he slowly grinded to 100k subs and since then his sub level has exploded. He's gained like 50k subs in three months. You know why? Because the algorithm is promoting his videos left and right, and that's normal. He's earned his spot in the sun at this point, so YouTube is actually helping him. Look at Bloho. He's been stuck at 110k subs for, what, the best part of four years? How is that possible? Well, I'm going to tell you why. YouTube has completely abandoned his channel because they see the real stats. They see how many people are actually on his channel. They're not going to slash down his numbers because they don't care about him, but that's the reason why he gets no help. That's the reason why he gets the same amount of views I get is because his channel is considered a small channel. But unlike mine, which is quite young, his is old. So YouTube has given up all hope on him and he knows it. This is the reason why he's so desperate with the daily approach where he repeats the same thing a thousand times. He, he has the intimate conviction that it's over for him on YouTube, but he still tries. He's still trying to this day. But it's never going to work. I have so much to say about that. I'm eventually going to uh, talk to you guys about uh, the proof I have accumulated that he actually bought a lot of subs back in the days, but that's going to be for later. I don't know how much time we're in right now. Uh, give me one second. I'm just going to check the time. Okay, we're going to do an extra 10 minutes because... <laughs> I didn't realize how long this series would be. I'm having a good time though. So, you know, I know that you guys like this series as well. And uh, plus, it uh, it really uh, pisses off Bloho. So, the more episodes I can put out, the better. And I have like 20 thumbnails and titles already uh, prepared. So, we're all good. Okay. Coaching. Let's talk about the coaching. First off, it's funny to see that uh, he refers to his clients as paid clients which means nothing. A paid client is a client that is already paid for, as if you bought, you bought that person. It's a paying client, Bloho. English is my third language and I know that. It's basic grammar. How do you not grasp that? It's been a year and he still says paid client, please. How is that possible? Um, he claims 20. If there are 20 people on this earth willing to pay 250 bucks a month to be co to be coughed by, by that clown, I give up. I give up. What is the point of even trying to better society if people are going to just drag it down with them like this? I don't believe that even for a second. Because 20 clients would be approximately 5k a month in gross, gross revenue. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. If he made that much money, he would show it off on camera. He wouldn't try to hide his lifestyle. So I think he has one or two clients, max. Uh, and actually, I, uh, I did some digging because some of his clients actually upload videos on YouTube for him to check their form, which, great job, guys. Look at the way he squats. You want that guy to tell you how to squat? Do you want to be a paraplegic by the time you're 25? But the issue is that some of them are already paraplegic in the head because I've confirmed five clients, and that's over a period of time of an, a year and a half. I don't know how many of them are still with him. I know that he had, he, he had three at a time at some point. That's the max I could confirm. And considering the fact that they all uploaded all of their sessions on YouTube, I can only surmise that it's his one way to communicate with the client when it comes to video, meaning that by default, all of his clients would be on YouTube. So I found five over a period of 1.5 years, which is not 20, five is not 20. Uh, who would pay? And also the, the funny thing is that he claimed 20 during the COVID lockdown. 
if he was smart, he would have he would have played down his numbers during the lockdown because the, the lockdown is the one moment where you're not going to be able to pay some schmub twenty two hundred dollars a month so they can coach you because you don't have access to a gym. So twenty people is not realistic. I know that some of his clients, the ones that upload videos at least, have home gyms. He also claimed he helped them build home gyms. Again, why are you taking advice from someone who's never done anything with his hands? He's not someone who's manual. He doesn't know anything. Putting a rogue rack in the middle of your living room is not building a home gym. That's not how it works. And the coaching thing, I'm going to get back to it because it's the one, it's one of the main reasons why I make these videos is because I want to prevent anyone from falling into the trap of actually paying that guy to get coughed. Why would you do that to yourself? Go down the street, buy a Subway sandwich, give it to a homeless guy and tell him to give you advice about lifting. He'll give you better advice and he'll most likely be better looking and smell better too. It's, and I, I've seen the people who he coaches, I've seen that a lot of them have mental disabilities. So I felt bad for them. They either have mental disabilities or they are uh, physically crippled. I knew that there was a guy who had a very bad case of scoliosis in his clients. And I just fell for them. I think that someone should help them. And actually something I've done before is uh, in the past, not with this account, but when I saw people that were reaching out to him, I usually contacted them privately and I let them know about his past so that they could know who they were trying to hire. And I've, I've, I've saved a few of those. The issue is that for the ones that have public channels, they usually get raided by anti-blow uh, trolls, which I know what you guys are doing. You're trying to prevent him from having clients. You're not doing it right. Those people are already, for the most part, you know, they're psychologically weak. So the first thing they're going to do when you attack them like this in waves is that they're going to start crying to Bloho for help. And he's going to tell all these lies about the stalkers and the fact that it's all fabrication and, and everything. And uh, you just help him secure clients in reality. You're not doing it right. But I say that why? I say that because it shows you that he can only scam people who are already in misery, meaning that they don't have the ability to see through his BS. And uh, so it's sort of not necessarily my job, but I see it as a responsibility for me to put it out there, put everything I found out there to show people that he couldn't, he cannot be trusted and you shouldn't be paying him anything to coach you. 200 bucks is the, it's the upward echelon of what you would pay for a coach. You can get an amazing powerlifting coach for that amount. So why go to him? Um, Oh, <laughs> this one is, this one is classic too. So we spoke about paid clients, the, the realm of imbecility that this guy engages in is not only in, uh, in, in words and its semantics. It's not just that he cannot speak properly. He cannot think properly. He claimed, and he still claims. And if you don't believe me, go on his channel and ask him that eggs are dairy. Eggs, you know, the thing that chicken make, ends, are dairy. So make, I don't know what level of, of enlightenment you need to be at to consider that as a, an even a possibility, but I don't, for some reason in his head, because I think eggs have cholesterol and, and milk have cholesterol. So some people conflate the two. He put, he took that conflation and he just bumped it to a whole new level. So for him, because they share the same characteristics, they're the same thing. If you are interested in psychological uh, development and, you know, anything related to children and the way they actually develop their intellect, that's, a, that's one stage of early development where kids are going to take attributes from objects and are going to, to match them together. Because for them, they mean that th these two things sharing a, the, sim the similar trait means that they're the same thing. Kids grow out of that phase when they're two. Okay. He's 40. He also claimed that uh, Poland invaded Germany during World War II. <laughs> so, yeah, at some point, uh, you ought to uh, open a book about uh, history, son. 
But, and that's the, the thing that I really want to talk about too, he's just crawling, guys. He's not an idiot, he's not an imbecile, he's not someone who clearly should go back to middle school. No, he's just crawling. I detest that excuse with every fiber of my being. I was there when trolling was starting to become popular. And trolling was never a way to create excuses for yourself. Trolling was just fun. It was stupid fun, but it was fun. And the goal of trolling was also to stay detached. If you got upset, you're not trolling anymore. You're emotionally engaged in the altercation. It's not trolling. When you say something stupid or do something stupid and someone calls you out and you say, I was just trolling, it's the equivalent of saying, it's just a prank, bro. It's weak. It's a pathetic excuse. And anyone who's a little bit smart sees through it immediately. For me, when someone does it, I lose, I lose respect. Like if you do something dumb and you get called out, accept it. Say, I was stupid and move on. Don't try and protect yourself behind that shield of, oh, I, I was just being smug. I was just seeing how dumb you were. That's not how it works. Thing is, he's been using that excuse for five years. Every time he does, he does or say something stupid, he says, I was trolling. And people like him are the reason why trolls are now the thing that they became. You know, someone who was trolling you back in the days, unless you had a very weak and fragile ego, it was a lot of fun because the guy was invested he was trying to find, you know, the chink in the armor. He was trying to find the one thing that would annoy you, get you to react. I used to do that all the time, which is also the reason why I personally don't ban people from this channel, because with the amount of trolling that I've done on the interwebs, I do not deserve to be free from it. If anything, any trolling I receive is karma. It's, it's, it's perfectly well received. Plus, I have fun with it. When you have someone who's actually trolling you, it's fun because you, it's, you, it's, a, it's a battle, but it's not violent. It's just play on words. It's sarcastic. It's everything I like about humor. But what trolling has become, especially in YouTube fitness nowadays, is smugness, idiots who think that they are above their station, and just a lack of an ability to reflect upon oneself. It ceased to be fun. It's all about the ego nowadays. And I hate that. And he is the patron saint of that stuff. Because for him, the entire fake milk stuff is 100% confirmed as being something he's done genuinely. In earnest, as we say in English. And the second that enough proof was out there to show that he was lying, he said, I'm just trolling guys. And he still to this day says that. He makes a video talking about the fake milk stuff every three or four months and he never apologizes. He keeps saying that he was trolling and he says, oh, if you couldn't tell I was trolling, then you're an idiot, which, as I said before, is common. People do that all the time when they get caught red handed lying. But issue is there is footage of him. Uh, there's footage of him repeating again and again that he's not lying, that he, this is actually a story that happened to him. There is screenshots of him uh, swearing on his mother's grave that he was a mercenary. So all of that constitutes clear proof that he was not trolling. And then when you take into account the fact that he's still very much affected by that story, he still cries about the fact that people were actually mad about him claiming stolen valor things. It's a, it's a clear show that all of that was a plan. He had a plan for that lie. And I'm not going to reveal it today, but for a lot of people who might not realize it, it wasn't just to make himself look better. Sure, it was because he's pathetic. So for him and many people are like this, Nether Beast is like this as well, by the way. For many people claiming to have been a soldier or, ha or having been a, an underground cage fighter is a way to you know, reinvent themselves because it gives them the aura of, of mystery. Like, oh, that guy is dangerous. Like that guy didn't just spend 10 years of his life playing World of Warcraft and wasting away. No, he was, he was in the jungle of Colombia fighting drug lords. Yeah, that's badass. Thing is, beyond that, there was a much more uh, sinister and a much more pernicious idea. And I will reveal that to you in the next episode, maybe not 
for the next part of the fake mercenary character study, but at some point I will tell you why Bloho claimed to be a fake mercenary. And I will tell you more about that story because a lot of people focus on the surface level of that lie, but they never dig. And when you dig, you find a lot of stuff. And uh, I'm quite good at digging. So Bloho, stay, you know, stay fresh, bro. It's all good. You have no power over this channel. YouTube doesn't listen to you anymore. You couldn't strike that channel even if you spent 15 hours trying to report every single video because YouTube doesn't work like that anymore. So the only thing you have left is commenting under my videos and giving me more of an algorithm boost and crying by yourself in the studio that you don't even own. I will see you next time. Have a good day.